Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I'm going to show you how to model tire treads. So as always, you want to use reference pictures. So here is some tires, and you can see the treads. So the thing about tire treads is that basically it's a repeating texture. That means that it's the pattern is continuously repeating. So the nice thing about that is that we only have to model a fraction of this piece and then we can create the whole tread. So first of all, I always try to get a blueprint and I found this one online and you can see that uh, this is a nice example of tire treads and I can use this for reference. What I did was actually just take one section of it and make sure that it was a repeating texture. So therefore, when I model this using this reference, I will be able to repeat the same pattern over and over in the model and it will translate. All right, so let's get started. I've already set up the Maya scene. As you can see, I have a plane with the image already in place. I'm going to go ahead and freeze its transformations and of course edit, delete by type history. The next thing I'm going to do is actually duplicate this because I'm lazy. Control D. Instead of building a new polygon, I'm just going to use this one. So Control D and then move it forward. I'm going to assign a new material to it. So right click, assign new material. I'm going to pick a Lambert and make it semi-transparent. This is going to be my tire tread, maybe underscore geo for geometry and go to the front view. Press F to focus. I know that the only thing I really need to do is build one side of it and then I can actually just duplicate it to the other side. So edit mesh, insert its loop tool. I'm going to go right to the center and one over here at the edge. And while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and start kind of building or following the lines of the tread. So I'm going to go ahead and add one here and here, here and here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go to face and delete the left side. And I'm going to start working on the right side. Zoom in a little bit. Now, another tool that I can use is called the interactive split polygon tool. But the problem with this interactive split polygon tool is that it has a, it has a tendency to only go to the center of the edge or the corners shift right click split split polygon tool and this one's nice because i can actually just click and drag anywhere i want and it will create an edge press enter when you're ready i can either go over here to the left and select the tool again which i will so i can click here and then can i make an edge press enter or just click g which is your last command so g and i can quickly make an edge press enter so this is going to take a couple of minutes while I go ahead and build this. If you feel like you made a mistake, you can always gra grab a vertice and move it up. Again, G. So eventually you're going to go ahead and, you know, just take the time to build this. You're just going to, the more edges you have, the smoother the transition. So again, I'm just holding, clicking G and then clicking and dragging G, click to drag and just kind of follow the patterns, the edges of this reference picture. Okay, I think I'm going to be okay with this. Right, let's delete the history, edit, delete by type history. Again, modify freeze transformations. We're going to duplicate it, control D, and into scale X, we're gonna go negative one, and that's gonna flip it to the other side. So now we have two pieces. I'm gonna take this one, I can see that it's not perfectly aligned, so I'm gonna go ahead and scoot it to the left. And now I'm going to go ahead and mesh, combine, Grab those center edges and bring them close together. I'm going to scoot it to the center. So select those vertices, edit mesh, merge. And now they're, co now they're connected. Awesome. Okay. So now that we have our treads, I'm going to go ahead and make this solid. So increase your transparency. And the next aspect is actually selecting your faces. So I'm going to select faces and I'm going to use these to extrude. So go ahead and start clicking on their little faces. That is going to create the tread. Again, the only thing I'm doing is just holding down shift and just clicking on the treads. Now we're going to edit mesh extrude. 
I'm going to use world space and just I'm going to extrude just a little bit and then hit G again and extrude again. This is going to help build a nice edge. So press three so you can see the effect. Okay, so we're going to be duplicating this. So I'm going to go ahead and select these top faces because when I repeat it, I, do, I want it to be a clear channel. I don't need it to be blocked. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these edges. I'm going to select the top and deselect these guys. Just double check I didn't select anything by accident. So again, the trick is to select the top row, deselect the, what you accidentally selected, and then delete. It's kind of like a fast way of selecting objects. So again, select this way, deselect this way, and there you go. Don't forget to do the bottom as well. So just select those bottom faces and we're going to delete them. Two more. There we go. Okay, it's starting to come along. Again, edit, delete by type history. We don't really need all that history. Next is going to be duplicate this, but uh, notice where it is. So modify center pivot. I'm going to rise it up. And the reason why I'm doing this is for two things. One is that I need to find the value that I need to increase when I do a duplicate special. And the second thing is that I really want to make sure that my vertices are close enough so that I can actually merge them. So you can see in the original that I'm going to have to scoot the original over just a little bit so that they actually, there's a vertice that they're going to be able to connect to in the in later on. So you can see here's a big gap. I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the right. And by right, I mean left, my other right. I'm going to check this to make sure this one doesn't even have a vertice, but I also know, or anywhere to connect, but I also know that these guys are, so you can see that these edges are actually not really necessary. So um, they're not actually part of the extrude. They're actually just part of the figure. So edit mesh, delete vertex. There you go. I did get an end gone, but uh, in this exercise, we're going to get a lot of end gones. And that's okay for, for, uh, for creating quick tre uh, tire treads. So again, I'm taking a look at my vertices, making sure that they align with the other vertices. And I'm pretty sure we're going to get the same thing over here, of course, because it's a uh, select those two, edit mesh, delete edge, delete edge vertex. Okay, so we have a tread that's actually going to be duplicated. So again, kind of pay attention to this value. I'm going to select it and copy it. Select this one and I'm going to grab the original. I'm going to hide my reference because I'm done with it. It's going to be edit mesh, duplicate special options. We're going to go edit, reset your settings. And I'm going to paste it in the Y. So that's X, Y, and Z. So this is translate X. Give myself maybe 18 and then apply. There you go. You've got some treads. Well, there's a little separation there, so I'm going to undo. And instead of 1.432, I'm just going to do 1.43 and apply again. And I'm going to give myself a couple more copies, so five more of these. And that's looking pretty good. Cool. Okay, so select them. Mesh combine. Now it's all nice and combined, but just because you did combine doesn't mean that the vertices are merged. So right click vertex, I would suggest that you select everything, edit mesh, merge. Now we press three to see what it looks like and it's starting to look like tire treads. Cool. Okay, so how do we make this look like a tire? We have to actually bend this in a certain way that it actually turns into a, uh, a circle. So we're gonna go to use a deformer. This is under animation and under create deformers, there's a nonlinear bend. And it's going to create a bend handle in the center. The bend handle is controlled using the inputs on the right. So go to your inputs, click on bend, and then increase your curvature. And you can see that it's bending this in the wrong way, which is fine if you wanted to make this C. We actually need to rotate our bend handle. So we're going to grab this and rotate it, and you can see that it's bending. And I'm going to rotate it on the Y 90 degrees. And how much do we actually bend it? 
well, as you can see, the number's getting closer and closer. And it looks like it's going to be 180 degrees. Okay, so now at 180 degrees, you can see that the tire is looking like a tire. Well, at least the treads are. All right, so edit, delete by type history, and that becomes permanent. So you no longer have the bend deformer. I might actually scale this, so modify center pivot, and then scale it so that it actually looks like a little bit more like tires. You can press three to see what it looks like. I can see that there's a little pucker there. So I'm gonna grab those vertices over here. Again, mesh. Whoops, maybe if I'm in polygons. Edit mesh, merge. Okay, so now that that's complete, let's go ahead and grab some edges. So I'm gonna grab these edges over here. Double click, double click, shift, double click, and then we can extrude. It's up to you which way you want to do. You can use the normal, which is what I'm using right now, normal space. I'm going to, but you can see that uh, I can drag this around <laughs> and I'm getting uh, engines, turbine engines. So what I'm going to do is uh, click on local space. And I'm actually going to scale in and then bring this out a little bit like so. And maybe just, whoa, yeah, what the heck, I'll just do that. I can always control it. Just give it a little bit of an edge like that and then extrude again using world space. G, extrude again. One more extrude to just bring it in a little bit. Maybe a slight in. Okay, now we have a tire. So there you go. It's got a pretty beefy tire here. It's up to you if you want to scale it further. Cool. Let's make this look like a commercial. So um, I always thought the commercials for tires were always very interesting, especially when I go to, um, uh, what's it called? To like a good year and they have all these tires there and it's always funny to me so they always have duplicated i mean uh, just a bunch of tires on top of one another so i'm going to duplicate it rotate it slightly remember to always make it slightly offsetted because nothing in this planet that we live in is straight except for human made so but to make it look like it's real you always try to make it offset just by a little bit, even if it means rotating it slightly, making it crooked, just that everything is not perfect. And that those type of um, details is what makes it look realistic. All right, so I'm gonna scoot this a little bit more. And then they always have one, I always thought this was funny. I'm just putting like one right there at the top. Something like that. <laughs> okay, let's make an occlusion out of this. So I'm going to give it a plane. And then I'm going to select this. I'm going to my render layers, create a new render layer. This is going to be occlusion. Right click, attributes, presets, occlusion. I'm going to zoom in. Look at my resolution gate and render there you go you've got some tire treads so on this exercise we learned how to um, use repeating textures to actually use as reference so that we can create repeating a repeated model and then we uh, extruded it uh, duplicate special use the bend uh, deformer to actually rotate it 180 degrees so it's actually connected extruded some more until we got tire treads so hopefully this exercise was helpful for so the next exercise i'm going to show you how to create normal maps using a high poly object so that's going to be the next exercise and i'll see you there mm -hmm.